Do you have fescue pastures? If so, you probably have the endophyte present. Most pastures in Tennessee that are Kentucky 31 are going to have the endophyte present. The endophyte is simply a fungus that grows inside the plant. It's very beneficial to the plant in helping it uh, fend off disease and, and insects, but it is detrimental to animals. Ideally, what we would, should do is take those pastures that have the endophyte, destroy the grass, and then establish it with an endophyte-free variety. Uh, but that's not practical. A lot of the land is not suitable for uh, total destroying of the sod and coming back and planting again. Also, this is a very expensive process. Uh, there have been, uh, over the years, a lot of people that have tried uh, the fungus-free fescues and have, had not as, have not had as good a success with those as they did the old Kentucky 31. So probably the choice way to handle the fescue endophyte is to try to manage around it. Well, how can you do that? First off, let's renovate those pastures. If we can get a third clover in those pastures, uh, that is simply going to be diluting the amount of uh, uh, fescue that the animal will be consuming. And also we'll be adding quality to that pasture and that forage that animals are, are grazing. Something else we can do in the management area is to do a little more management of the grazing grazing patterns of these animals. Uh, we need to keep that grass relatively short. We don't need to graze it in the ground, but we don't need, again, let it to get up to where it's going to be producing seed heads. Because the two areas where we find the largest amount of the endophyte is the leaf sheath, and that's simply where the leaf attaches to the stem, and in that seed head. So if we keep it down below where we have those two things, the animals are not going to be consuming near as much of the endophyte. Uh, so that will help out an awfully lot. The next thing to give consideration to is grazing animals on different forages during the hot part of the year. Uh, traditionally, if, when it gets over 80 degrees, we see greater detrimental effects from the endophyte. So if we can let the animals graze Bermuda grass and Sudan sorghum, something else during that uh, real hot period of the year, that's going to be uh, very beneficial in reducing the amount of endophyte that the animal will actually be consuming. We may want to start that breeding season uh, a little bit earlier than, than what we normally would so that we're not breeding any or at least very little during June and July when that temperature is going to be uh, above that 80 degree level. If we've got hay that's made from uh, fields that had the fescue in the fight, uh, if we'll wait and feed those after the temperatures uh, get uh, down toward freezing, at least below 40 degrees, we'll see less uh, effect from the end of fight using it that way than we would uh, during hotter temperatures. So. The fescue endophyte is a real problem. I don't think it's going to be possible for us to get rid of all of it in our pastures, but there are ways to manage around it. So if you would like some additional information regarding managing around the fescue endophyte, please contact your local extension agent.